So today we're talking about applications of vectors. Um, by the end, you'll be able to apply the concepts and properties of vectors that we've already talked about to real world situations. So basically we're going to be looking at like, say you have a plane leaving on one vector and another plane leaving on a different vector and trying to determine if they intersect each other well, or if they're going to collide. So if they collide, that means they're definitely going to intersect each other, which means we're going to use the features of how to find... Um, how to find where two vectors intersect. Or if we're trying to figure out the angle between two boats, if they leave the same dock at a certain speed, then that means we're going to be looking for the angle between two vectors. So that's how we're going to be able to apply some of the concepts that we already know to um, some of these real world applications. So, all right, so we have a boat A, at T hours, leaves a harbor, and we have the equation representing the, the boat, okay, as you notice. It goes straight to T and then the vector 30, 15, which means that its position vector is where? It's at zero, zero, zero. And then we have a second boat B is passing near the harbor. Its position vector at time T is given by this vector here. So its position is at 55. Okay? So how far apart are the two boats at the time the first boat leaves the harbor? How, what are you going to do to figure that out? You're going to do the magnitude. And the magnitude of what? Plug in zero and find R1 and R2 at zero, and then you subtract them to find the vector, and then you find the magnitude of that. You are going to subtract the two vectors and well, what part of the vector? Plug in zero. So which part? The position. The position, because technically you have one boat that's located at zero, zero, and you have another boat that's located at 55, and so you're trying to figure that out right there. So 50 or 5 minus zero, zero is just that. So you're looking for the magnitude there, the distance, okay? And so the length of that vector. And when you take the square root of 50, or when you square 50, that's... Excuse me, say it for a second. All right, 50 squared is what? 25. And 5 squared is 25. So what is the square root of 25, 25? 5 squared is 101. All right, and your calculator, what is that? I thought it was 33 and a half plus 1, but it's the other one. I'm going to subtract 1, I'm sorry. Exactly. That's all I do. Yeah. Once you get that. Well, 
I got um, n squared. What's n squared? What is it? The square, square root of n squared. Oh. The square root of 200. Yeah. Which is pretty good for Fourteen point one. Fourteen point one. Yeah, we forgot to take into account that one didn't start at zero. Mm -hmm. It would have started at zero. So not even that. Just that that just just located known position, so it should be coming directly from the mm -hmm. So that's good. All right. And the last one says, are the boats in danger of colliding if one of the boats does not change course? Are they going to collide? If they you're gonna, you're gonna set them equal to each other, and basically you gotta look at the parameter, okay? So R1 equals R2, so then that's gonna be um, 30T equals 50 plus 10T and 15T equals 5 plus 2. Okay, give me, give me a theory of value distribution. Okay. This is why I, this is why I stop that. Well, it doesn't it. work. Oh, exactly. Nine. See, and if, 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 it, if it did work, that means that the two boats would intersect each other, meaning that if you solved them and you got the same T value, then yes, they would collide. But if you get two different ones, that means they don't collide, there's no intersection. Okay, so yes, this will be what? 20T equals 50. T is 2.5 here. You would have 5T equals 5. T equals 1. So since both parameters are not the same, that means they're not going to intersect. So, but I mean, technically, couldn't they intersect by their, like their paths? <laughs> well, in that case, they're not negative or colliding, are they? Part of but how? I'm saying, mean, how would you know that? How would you know that, like, their paths could intersect without the boats hitting? But see, none of them are changing are changing their course. So wherever they're starting and whatever direction they're heading, wherever they're starting, they're never they're not going to meet. Okay. And if you look, this one, they're both heading in a positive direction. And since they're starting on different spots, they can't be there. It's not like it doesn't make any sense. Questions? Yeah. 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 Let's look at this one. It's a little easier one. I'll give you guys a, a second to chat it out amongst yourselves, and then we'll come back together. All right, so we have the position vector of a ship is 30 kilometers north and 60 kilometers east. The position vector of a buoy is 20 north and 45 east. What is the position of the ship relative to the buoy? How did you figure that out? Well, at that time, they were trying to figure out what was correct and what. So we just looked at it and wrote it out, and it was 10 kilometers south and 15 west. So what did you subtract? Um, it was too complicated to figure that out, so I just based on what they got. If you're going from the buoy, it takes me a ton of time south, though, because it should be further, further to the north. Uh, yeah, that's why I couldn't figure out which one to subtract. Well, your starting position is the buoy. That's the starting position. Okay. They subtract yeah. the position so of the buoy. Yeah, yeah, you should have done shift so minus the buoy. Same thing as the buoy. Same thing as the buoy. Same thing as the buoy. Okay. And remember that X is on top, so your east direction needs to be first, and then your north direction should have been on the bottom, so you should have been 15 and 10. So it should have been 15 east. Yeah. But you guys really got the same answer for the buoy. Yeah, because the distance is nothing but the what? Magnitude. Magnitude. So you're taking the magnitude of the two, and what did you guys get for your value? Uh, 18.2. Uh, exactly. 18.2. Uh, so we go to 5.5. Five, 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 five. Five. Questions. So it really is just trying to decide, okay, what, ex what exactly, what concept are we applying from vectors to determine what's happening? Okay, here's the next one. All right. All right. Oh. So you have to find the speed of the two helicopters. As we know, we need speed. We basically need to find the magnitude, and we're going to use the what? The direction. We're going to use the direction of the So then you get the square root of 18, which is about 4.24. And then for the other one, again, using the magnitude. 
Let's see. So the direction vector, which is 81 plus 1 is 82, therefore 86 is what? 9.2. For B, you have to show that the two helicopters do not meet, which means that you need to take the two equations and set them equal to each other. To show that they do not meet, that means you have to make sure that you show They don't match off the bat, but if it works the second one, not the third one, you gotta make sure you do both. Okay. So when you solve for t for the first equation, what does t equal? Ten. 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 So then when you go to plug that in, that is three minus ten, so it should equal negative seven plus ten. That's negative seven, which does not equal three. Now we define the distance between the helicopters when t is ten. So we have a value for our parameter, so what do you think we need to do with this? We want to go in, plug it in. <laughs> so, when we plug that in for R1, what are we going to get? Um, 21, negative 7, 30. For R2, we're going to get 21, 3, 88. So you plug in your parameter, which is 10, and you actually evaluate it to get these two vectors here. Now you try to find the distance between the two helicopters when it is at 10. So how do you do that? Subtract the magnitude. Subtract the magnitude? Subtract, Subtract the magnitude. Oh, and then the magnitude. Yes, so you have to subtract them and then you get the magnitude. Okay? So when you subtract them, that will be 0 at the top, 10. It didn't work either way. It didn't matter. 51. Negative If you start forgetting your negatives now, you're going to forget them when you meet them, partner. Trust me. All right. So when you do this, 10 squared plus 51 squared, take the square root and keep it. It's like 52.04 something. That's 51.97. Oh. I got 51.97. That's what I got. Too. My bad. So. All right, so they give you uh, they give you that this information right here, which basically indicates unit vectors with their. Teachers, please dismiss those students attending C. So you're going to take the unit vector and you're going to multiply it by uh, the, the C, and that's going to be your direction vector for part A. Okay, and so since you already know um, that uh, it's starting at the airport, and the airport represents. Um, the origin says so zero, zero, and you have an altitude of 12, okay? Then you're gonna have, uh, <coughs> then you're gonna have your parameter times your direction vector, which you're gonna get by doing unit vector. Unit vector is nothing but your vector times your, divided by your magnitude. Well, your vector, which is um, four, three, zero, is all gonna be divided by the magnitude of this. Magnitude of the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared is the square root of 25, which is 5. Then you're going to multiply this whole thing by 800, and then that will give you your, um, your direction vector, which will be uh, 640, um, um, 480, and 0. So that's your answer for part A. Then for part B, all you're going to do is you're going to plug in 1 for T. When you do that, that will be 640, 480, and 12. And then for part C, if, are they in uh, danger of collision? Collision basically means that the two are going to be intersecting. So you need to set up the two equations equal to each other. So that's going to be 640T equals a negative 300. Uh, plus, um, oh, we're going to use the same parameter here. Um, yeah, well, we can use a different parameter here. 600s, you're basically just setting up your equations. So if 
last one is going to be 12 equals um, 12 t. That's the easy one. T equals one. Um, when you go to put it back in, that will be 640. <coughs> Sorry guys, I had this backwards. It's because it says that it's location, so it actually should have been 600 minus 300, and then 480 minus 400. And then this one actually is 12 equals 12, so you can't really do that. Okay, um, so we can't even use that last one, but what we can do is we can uh, set up a system here and, um, and actually find the value of T and S and then um, we can go ahead and put it in here. So I'm gonna go solve this real quick. Solving this off camera, I ended up getting that T equals 6 sevenths and S equals 6 thirty fifths. And so this means that um, the plane, uh, when you go to plug back in, they're actually gonna cross with the following coordinates. That's gonna be uh, 480. Or I guess we're gonna use it in the figures. Uh, 549, um, 411, and 12. Okay. Um, so when you go to uh, plug in, um, however, there's no collision through uh, though because plane A will pass the point at 1251, uh, while plane B is passing through the point at 12 inch. So. There's the last of this 